Good morning. My name is Pam Groswald, and I am with your Harwich Voter Information Committee. Today, I'm with Michael Ford, our town moderator. I'm sure most people know who you are by now, Michael. Good morning, Pam. Uh, we are starting our up to town meeting preparation, and Michael is joining us today to help us understand and prepare for petition articles and articles in general. So you want to start and give us the process? Or? Sure, I'd be happy to, uh, Pam. Um, the town meeting uh, consists of a warrant and the warrant is a collection of all the various subject matters that the voters are asked to uh, act on at the town meeting and those are called articles. The warrant is the responsibility of the Board of Selectmen by statute here in Massachusetts. So it is their warrant, they put it together, they assemble it, they decide the uh, order of the articles that go into the warrant. Um, and there is a time period in which the warrant opens for uh, articles to go in. Most of the articles in the warrant are submitted by uh, either the Board of Selectmen or the Town Administration or one of the various committees or departments uh, within the town. And uh, those consist of our annual operating budget, our annual capital uh, projects, our capital plan, um, and then there are various other uh, projects. The, the school budget obviously comes in, the Cape Cod Technical School budget. So all of those um, are handled by the town administration, the school committee, the board of selectmen, and uh, comprise the, the major spending articles um, that we deal with on an annual basis. In addition to that, as Pam has indicated, there is the um, option here in Massachusetts for petition articles. In other words, the ordinary citizen has a right to submit an article for consideration uh, and action at the town meeting. That process is also um, uh, governed by statute here in Massachusetts. Um, it takes 10 uh, signatures of duly registered voters uh, to get a, a petition article um, in the annual uh, town meeting warrant. And today's kind of timely because today is really uh, the deadline, as I understand it anyway, uh, this year, uh, noontime, uh, to submit a petition article. And again, it requires 10 um, signatures of registered voters. The article itself um, has to be in proper form. Uh, there is a, a, a form that is available at the town clerk's office that uh, needed to set our town clerk could provide one to you. And it has the necessary introduction language and then the subject matter of the petition is something that you would fill out if you're interested in doing that. Um, but Massachusetts is one of the few states um, uh, in the Union that allow private petitions to come in before the legislative body, which is the town meeting. And so it's an important right um, uh, that you have um, and one that is usually exercised to a certain degree each year. We have some private petition articles. I don't know uh, whether there are petition articles this year. I don't generally see the warrant until after it closes and the selectmen put it together and a draft of it is published and, and then I'm aware. Um, there is also a right uh, to petition uh, for an article to be placed in a special town meeting warrant. Now, the difference between an annual town meeting warrant and the special uh, town meeting warrant is that uh, the annual meeting is set at a certain time by our charter uh, each year to occur uh, in May. Um, a special town meeting is one that is called by the Board of Selectmen uh, to occur. And historically here in, in Howitch, we have had a a special meeting within our annual meeting. In other words, we're, we do our annual business and at some designated point during that time, uh, we stop and go to and consider a special town meeting warrant. Those are articles that come in at a later time. The special town meeting, if we have one, uh, is a decision, again, of the Board of Selectmen. Um, it's made uh, in the next 30 or 45 days or so, and they'll uh, advertise that. And if they decide to hold a special, there is also a right of private petition to place an article in it. However, the bar is a lot higher. You have to get 100 signatures of duly registered voters. Um, a town clerk checks these off to make sure the, all 100 are duly registered and qualify. 
Um, so it's a higher bar for a special town meeting. And I think the thinking of the legislature in doing that was that a special town meeting is supposed to be for exceptional uh, issues, uh, issues that could not have reasonably been um, known of or prepared uh, for the annual town meeting. And sometimes that happens just uh, on a time basis. Something comes up um, after the warrant has closed, as it will today for the annual meeting, and it's of such an importance or uh, is one that, that private uh, uh, voters feel is important enough uh, to petition. Now, what happens if the selectmen decide not to call a special town meeting? Um, if that's the case, then uh, there is no right of uh, a private petition at that point since uh, no meeting has been scheduled. However, there's another provision that I simply will mention in the general laws here in Massachusetts that gives uh, voters the right to uh, ask the selectmen to call a special town meeting and that requires 200 signatures, so the bar is up even, even higher, 200 signatures of registered voters. Mm -hmm. Again, they have to be duly uh, checked by the, the town clerk. But if they do, then the Board of Selectmen is required to hold that meeting within a certain time period. Um, and they would have a right at that point to add other articles uh, to that warrant. So just to review quickly, at the annual town meeting, which expires today, 10 signatures of registered voters to get a petition article in. At a special town meeting, 100 uh, minimum. And uh, to force the selectmen to hold a special town meeting is 200. Well, it's interesting information. Um, I would like to know also about writing the article itself. Um, I know in past years, you certainly know that if somebody waits until the last minute, then they have to go forward. You have to help them write it during a town meeting. This takes time. And it also adds confusion to the town meeting. So I, I think if somebody really feels strongly about something, it would be nice if they were prepared well in advance. Then you could help them, or who would do that? Would it be the Board of Selectmen? Preparation is great advice, Pam. I, I, would, I would concur, because it, uh, uh, things coming up at the last minute at town meeting um, uh, do have a tendency to kind of s slow things down and, and, and create some confusion. That said, I don't want anybody to think that they don't have a right to participate at a town meeting. And if, and if at town meeting they decide to, and I think what you're referring to in addition to articles is motions mm -hmm. or amendments to articles, mm -hmm. um, if on the floor of the meeting something strikes them in the debate and uh, they have a, an idea that maybe they'd like to amend the motion to uh, uh, make it more clearly reflect what they view as the sense of the meeting at that moment. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to think that um, you don't have every right to do that. You do. And that's part of the process. That's part of town meeting. Um, and at that moment in the meeting, if, if that occurs, um, you can simply bring that to uh, the moderator's attention. And um, uh, he or she, whoever it is, would certainly give you the time to put that together and to assist you with the proper wording uh, so that you could bring your thought or idea uh, forward before the meeting. Um, so motions, uh, I would agree, if, if you're thinking of amending an article at a meeting and you know ahead of the meeting, uh, by all means feel free to contact me um, or whoever the moderator is in years to come um, uh, because it's, um, uh, it's very important that uh, amendments are worded correctly and if you know ahead of time, um, uh, I've always looked at motions in confidence because some people don't want to necessarily get them around, and I'm happy to do that. And um, if I get one, I'm happy to um, assist a, a voter in putting it in proper form so their idea or concept um, can be properly brought before the meeting. Um, and so that's, a, that's an encouragement. Preparation, uh, Pam, you hit it right on the head, is, is very important. Um, in terms of articles themselves, petition articles, um, that has less to do with the moderator. Um, I would encourage, uh, if you're thinking of a petition article, while I'm certainly not adverse to taking a look at it as to form, um, if somebody um, brings one forward, I've done that previously for folks to look, make, just make sure it's in the proper form. But an article itself is really something that's occurring before town meeting. The moderator's job kind of starts once the warrant is complete. The selectmen are in charge of the warrant, and once it's complete and, and scheduled, 
that's when the moderator takes over to um, uh, run the meeting. So um, uh, if you're thinking of a petition article, town clerk, great place to start to get the form, uh, and certainly the town administration, uh, be it Mr. Clark's office uh, or the selectman's office there, um, they have a, a crackerjack staff and a lot of experience there, and they would be able to assist you as well. Let's talk, if we could, for a moment about wording. In the past, there have been a couple of articles that you need to vote no if you mean yes or yes if you mean no. And I watch people in the audience, and they're, everybody's confused, but they get so hung up on how to do it properly that you don't listen to the conversation. Yeah. So how can we avoid that? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And we've done some things to try and um, address that issue. I think what you're talking about is when a motion is brought to indefinitely postpone an article. Uh, because if that becomes the motion, uh, then you vote yes if you want to defeat the article. Right. And, and that's what you're talking about. Is that conceptually, <laughs> it, it, it simply uh, doesn't seem to make sense. So um, what we've done is uh, we now make every effort to have a positive motion on the floor. In other words, something that people can mm -hmm. vote yes or no for. Mm -hmm. And we amended our rules to do that um, as, as follows. When, uh, when an article is brought on the floor at the Howitch Town meeting, um, uh, our bylaws direct the moderator to go to the Finance Committee uh, to make the main motion. We amended those bylaws so that they now only make the main motion if it's positive, if it's favorable. Right. And uh, it used to be that the Finance Committee made a main motion whether they were for or against. And so those articles that they weren't recommending, they would move to indefinitely postpone. And then we'd have that main motion on the floor that, as you say, people oftentimes didn't understand which way to vote. So now, if the Finance Committee's uh, recommendation uh, is uh, not in favor of the article, the petitioner is given the option to make the motion. And so uh, a petitioner has a right now to get a positive motion on the floor. Mm -hmm. So we've eliminated some of those indefinite postponement motions. We still have them because oftentimes a petitioner at that point recognizing the Finance Committee is, is not in favor, decides not to press the article, um, then the Finance Committee still makes a motion to indefinitely postpone. Mm -hmm. And so what I do when I take the vote is I try to cast it in a different way. I say, all those in favor of indefinite postponement, and, and that way, I think it's a little easier for people to understand that and vote yes. But you're right, you have to pay attention and you have to listen or you might end up voting the wrong way. You do. But more importantly, you have to attend. And I, I think something that, that gets lost in the shuffle is the fact that town meeting is probably the purest form of government we have. Not every state allows a town meeting. It's Correct. usually representative. Right. And it's only as good as the participation. Well, you're right. And uh, uh, town meeting is a participation sport. There's no mm -hmm. question about it. You've got to be there in, in, in order to participate in it. And it, it is unique um, to our area of, of the nation, uh, particularly New England. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where you find town meetings is in the New England states. And uh, here in Massachusetts, we uh, still have it in, in those towns that haven't moved to a council form of government. Uh, there are a couple of towns um, on the Cape that have moved away from an open town meeting. Falmouth, for example, has a representative town meeting, right. so the town meeting members are elected. And a Barnstable has now moved away. After 300 years, they uh, uh, went from a uh, town meeting form of government to a council form of government. Mm -hmm. And so now the council is the legislative body, and they meet uh, bi-monthly in Barnstable and, and uh, handle the legislative affairs. But all the other towns in the Cape remain as, as open town meeting. So, uh, but it is a participation sport. I, I know that sometimes we have a difficulty getting a quorum. Our quorum now is down to 150. Right. So we really haven't had much problem in, in getting the 150. We usually don't, at least on the first night. Um, historically, when you didn't go to town meeting back in colonial days, you were fined. <laughs> and uh, of course, back then as well, it was only the men that got the chance to go to town right. meeting and vote. So lots changed. Um, you're not fined anymore, but you certainly are encouraged to come and participate, as Pam says. Well, they used to go to the different restaurants and bars and the 
ball games and haul people in. <laughs> Sometimes we'd, we'd have to uh, uh, send a police car out to rouse a quorum up. I agree, Pam, uh, in years past. So, right. 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 We, we've had a pretty good uh, representation uh, of late. So. Right. And if you have not registered to vote, you have until March 23rd to do so. Go to town hall and somebody at the clerk's office will help you do that. It's an important right. It's an education. It's fun. As Michael says, it's also a sport. I hadn't thought of it that way, yeah. but, but it is. So, Michael, I thank you very much for, Charlie, welcome. for My doing pleasure. this. It's, it's important for people to see your face. Michael was, I think you still hold the record for the, the youngest well, I'm moderator not sure. uh, who was I elected. I think I, my first town meeting was 1976. Mm -hmm. So it's been a while. But I think you were the youngest elected at that time. I, I, I may have been. Yeah. So. Well, who knows? Maybe you'll be the oldest to retire. Well. <laughs> I hope so. You do okay. a wonderful job. We appreciate well, your Thank you. I enjoy and it. And the people of Howitch uh, uh, have made town meeting enjoyable. So. Good. Please come out and join us. It's a very important right that, you, that we all have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Pam. Okay. See you in May.